In this problem, we're given a crate of mass 50 kilograms sitting on frictionless wheels, so friction is negligible, and we're told there are two forces pulling on the crate in exactly the x and y directions. We can see one of those forces points in the positive x direction with a magnitude of 200 newtons, and the other points in the positive y direction with a magnitude of 150 newtons. Just to clarify, this is an overhead view of the crate, so the crate is moving around on a horizontal surface and we're looking down on it from above. And what we're trying to find here is the acceleration of the crate in polar form. Now, polar form means we want the magnitude of the acceleration and the direction given as an angle. So we're going to start by adding these two force vectors to get the net force. And remember, the way we add vectors is head to tail. So we pick up the 150 newton vector and attach its tail to the head of the 200 newton vector. Then the vector sum points from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second. And that vector sum, that's the net force on the crate. So we label the magnitude of that as F net. Now, because these forces point exactly in the X and Y direction from the beginning of the problem, we already have a right triangle. So we label our right angle, and in addition to that, I labeled the angle of elevation of F net, and we labeled that with the Greek letter phi. So now we can actually start to do some calculations. F net is given by the length of the hypotenuse here, so we just use the Pythagorean theorem to get that. So F net is given by the square root of the sum of the squares of these two legs. So it's going to be the square root of 200 squared plus 150 squared. And when we run the numbers on this, we get exactly 250 newtons for the length of that hypotenuse. Next, we need to find our angle of elevation that we called phi. And the tangent of phi is 150 over 200. In other words, phi is the angle whose tangent, that's inverse tangent, of 150 over 200. And when we run the numbers on this to three significant digits, we find an angle of 36.9 degrees. So that's our net force written in polar form but we were really asked for the acceleration of this crate in polar form. So the first point I want to make is that the acceleration happens in exactly the same direction as the net force. So we already have the angle for the acceleration vector, but we need to use Newton's second law to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So quoting Newton's second law, I prefer in most cases to just write Newton's second law as A equals F over M. That's just F equals MA turned around if you're used to seeing it that way. So we take the magnitude of our net force, that was 250 newtons, and we divide by the mass of the crate. And this one comes out to exactly 5, and the units there are meters per second squared. Now if you're wondering what's going on with the units there, we had newtons per kilogram, but a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. You can see this by looking at F equals MA. So replacing the newtons with kilogram meters per second squared, the kilograms cancel, and newtons per kilogram are actually units of acceleration, meters per second squared. All right, so we've got the magnitude of the acceleration vector, and we've got the direction of the acceleration vector that's 36.9 degrees above the horizontal. So we'll just wrap things up by making a quick picture of this guy. So here's a picture of our acceleration vector, and note what I did there is I made it exactly the same direction as the direction of the net force, but I showed the length differently. And the magnitude of our acceleration was five meters per second squared, and this is happening at an angle of 36.9 degrees above the horizontal, and we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.